Hello there and welcome to my channel. It is time for a tech video and in this video I will be showing off my Ubuntu Revolution Sim Racing cockpit. It is time for an updated tour around this little room and what stuff I got here. Uh, I have an older video on my channel here on front seat racing but uh, it's beginning to be a it is outdated. I have upgraded uh, my sim rig uh, over the years. So I will start off in this video to show how things went from the beginning uh, and uh, what kind of uh, hardware and peripherals I am using today. Yes, so this is my uh, sim rig story. Thanks for watching. Follow me. Bye. I started my interest of sim racing with driving rally games in my living room. I used a Fanatec Rensport wheel stand and a Logitech G27 wheel. After that I got a Thrustmaster T500RS wheel and went from racing on console to PC. I then rather quickly realized that I wanted to take this interest to the next level. I invested in the Obuto Revolution sim racing cockpit and it have been out since 2012 and are now at 2018 beginning to be a bit dated but I have not heard anything about new stuff coming from Obuto so it is the latest version to date. Some small updates from Obuto side have been made to some parts of the rig but nothing major. The sim rig came one summer day in 2014 in seven packages and all was very well packaged. All boxes were labeled with numbers and that helped so things were attached in the right order. There were a lot of bubble wrap around the frame parts which took a while to get rid of but they were there for a reason. At no point did I have any damage or scratches on the frame. It was sheer Christmas Eve when I then had to start installing all the hardware and see if it was as I expected. And it was. My hardware and peripherals of use and my PC system have changed over the years. And here are some photos showing how some stuff have developed. First I had my sim rig pointed to the opposite wall from what I have today. And I also got a real tachometer from Autometer with a shift light. And it was connected through a Pro Gauge controller from Swim Project, so it would work on a PC. But it is so easy in the beginning to just buy cool stuff of hardware and peripherals and add them to the sim, and then later on realize that sure, it was functional, but in the longer run, not contribute to anything of value really. Such a thing was the tachometer and also a small tablet to the left of my steering wheel, so they had to go. Various other changes have also been made to the hardware and peripherals since these days, and mainly the PC have been overhauled for better performance, and also the Thrustmaster base and add-on wheels, and some small peripherals as headsets, webcams, keyboards and mice have changed. One cool and funny thing was that I the same year won the Guru 3D Rig of the Month, which was the first for a sim rig to do. That was a statement for me to keep moving things forward. At around the beginning of 2016 I decided to start my sim racing channel Front Seat Racing here on YouTube. And my first video was me running Dirt Rally in Finland filmed with my Samsung Android phone DUI taped to the wall behind me. Shortly thereafter I filmed this channel's first tech video of a short video tour of my sim rig. And this is now going to be my last tech video as I will in the future combine the tech content 
in my video blog instead. So this video will close the circle. Time for some new updated video recordings of my sim rig. Starting from the right and this is a must have for me. This is the amplifier BKA130 that powers my Butt Kicker Gamer 2 transducer located under the seat. Using this hardware with the software SimVibe from SimExperience get me vibration based of engine noise, wind noise, collisions, bumps and unevenness in the asphalt right in my bottom when racing. The technology is not based on sound in the game, it is based on the game's data, allowing for example menus and in-game music not to shake the chair. Only when I drive the car it gives me rumbles. It requires an additional sound card connected to the computer to work, so I use a Creative Sound Blaster Audio FX card to feed the amplifier and the butt kicker. And for the main sound for everyday use and for sim racing I use the internal sound card of my motherboard. I use the Thrustmaster TH8RS shifter, which is hard mounted on a shifter plate on the frame. I use the sequential shifting mode and the official Thrustmaster sequential knob and it is working perfectly for me doing oval racing. I also have a technical feedback sequential shift mode plate from Rikmotech installed. That shortens the throw by 10% and makes the gear change a lot stiffer and have a more mechanical feel to it. A very good upgrade. Derek Spear Designs manufactures various kinds of quality hardware to sim racing enthusiasts. And this is my DSD button box Race King from 2014 and it is really necessary for quick access to controls and functions while driving. On the bottom box I can map various features that are used in iRacing such as menus, sounds and simple on-off functions. The plastic decals are made by a Dumo LetroTag label maker. Shown here on the video are also one of two Obutto acrylic tabletops that my butt kicker amplifier is placed on. These more tables are useful in many ways. They can be used as a stand for keyboards, speakers, paper or just as an extra work surface. I use triple 27 inch 60 Hz BenQ monitors, 1920-1080 resolution, VR LED panel and flicker free technology and they have a narrow frame of 11.5 mm which make them customized for Nvidia surround. This monitor get the basic job done and I know newer G-Sync or FreeSync panels with synced refresh rate are much much better but the price tag of changing all three monitors will be staggering, so no upgrade here in sight. Above the middle monitor I have my 9.7 inch tablet of the brand Denver. And on this tablet I use the software iSpeed when I am racing. And it is attached with a RAM mount that has an flexible arm. I use different kind of RAW mounts for all my mounted sim racing peripherals as they are easy mounted on the round tubing on the Obutto frame. Also viewed here behind the three satellite speakers are my black tubing that electricians normally use and I have my Supra speaker cable running inside of it. And the tubing simply helps out to increase the overall racing like aesthetics. Talking about speakers, I use the Logitech Z906 sound system, including an 8 inch subwoofer, and the satellite speakers are quite heavy, but they fit well on the speaker brackets from Ubuntu, both on top of the monitors and on the back of the seat. The speaker cable are hidden behind a strap in the middle of the back side of the seat. 
The three front satellite speakers sit in a little angle down position to spread the sound better towards the listening position. The headphones in use are a pair of Philips SHP9500S with an open back design and an attachable VMuda Boom Pro microphone. This combination beats my previous headsets from SteelSeries, Sennheiser and QPad in terms of audio and mic quality hands down. Just marvelous comfort and the open back design compared to closed back designs makes me hear what is going on in the room and the house when racing, and that makes me more relaxed. The wide sound stage are also impressive, and I have tried closed back headsets before, but the odd feeling of not hearing myself when talking in the microphone is just odd and spooky, so open back or semi open back designs are a must for me here. We all got our favorite headsets or headphones, but I have reached my endgame here with a bit of a surprise with a pair of Philips headphones and an attachable microphone. Generally I use my headphone for racing and the speaker mainly for listening to music or watching YouTube videos. For switching between the audio outputs, speakers or headphone, I use a program called SoundSwitch with a hotkey on my keyboard. Moving on, to the left I have one more button box from Derek Spear Design. It's a Flight FLT-1 2015 which is actually intended for a flight simulator setup, but this fits perfectly to control the functions and macros associated with the pit stop when I'm racing. Here I got different hotkey, for example different combinations of tires and amount of fuel and a lot more. Above the button box and easy reachable I got the Elgato Stream Deck that simplify me streaming my races live to YouTube and Twitch. I use the streaming software OBS for capturing my gameplay and with this piece of hardware and the 15 small LCD buttons and the software included makes it more fun. I don't really need it but I guess we can't get enough of hotkeys and macros especially when racing and streaming at the same time. One thing that I really need is the Obutto cup holder that accommodates a medium sized water bottle or a regular can of a soft drink. It is actually larger in diameter than the video might suggest. The cup holder is a must for me for my morning coffee and for drinks during longer racing sessions. The idea was that all the cables would go inside this black backbone and central part of the Obutto, but they did not fit. It became an external cable mat instead. Black large cable ties are used to get the cables in place and they can be open and closed, which is good when I need to change the hardware and add or remove cables from the SIM rig. Some RAM mounts are shown here at the back, and on the top of the center satellite speaker, I got one of my two webcams. The Logitech C920 HD Pro facing down to my seat when racing, and the other webcam, the more wide-angled Microsoft Livecam Studio, is placed on a tripod filming me from the side. Behind the seat is a green screen made of cloth making my background on the Logitech webcam transparent and I got it stretched on the wall and then added a wooden frame around it. The Obutto seat gives me good support around the buttocks and back and compared to the past when I used the office chair it's a big difference of course in terms of relief and ergonomics. The seat can be adjusted just like a real seat in a car and the inclination of the back section is done by a lever on the side. On the swivel and articulating arm and tray to the left I got my Microsoft Wireless Desktop 900 keyboard and mouse. Here there are no need for any mouse pads as the whole tray is coated with the thin adhesive layer of neoprene that do the job. 
When I am racing, I just move the pivoting arm with the keyboard and mouse to the side and the entire tray is adjustable with screws on the underside so that the level is kept horizontally and not weighed down. I aim to get the position in front of my steering wheel and my monitors that are as authentic and accurate as possible. I use a 45 degree angle on the side monitors and a 160 degree field of view when racing in iRacing. The monitor in the middle is positioned as close to the steering wheel it is possible to get the right perspective so the feel is that I am sitting in the front seat rather than the back seat. The monitor stand is standing freely on two legs on either side of the obutto which means that the steering wheel's force feedback when racing is not transmitted to the monitors or the webcam. This is my view and seating position when racing. And right in front of me I got the Thrustmaster T300RS base which is hard mounted to the frame and the add-on steering wheel is the 33cm in diameter Thrustmaster Sparco R383. It is a 1.1 replica of a real rally car wheel with the same name and it fits me perfectly for doing oval racing and the Alcantara material on the rim is sweet. Despite all the buttons on the two bottom boxes mentioned earlier, I also need buttons with functions on the steering wheel itself. It is a must to be able to control voice chat, team speak, volumes and other commands without taking the hands off the wheel during racing. The 7.4 kilo heavy Thrustmaster steel pedals are a leftover from the T500 RS package I owned earlier. And I have my pedals hanging in the so-called inverted GT position. The brake pedal, which is the most important of the three pedals, is equipped with a load cell from Rikmotec. This little piece of electronics installed inside the pedal measure how hard I press the pedal and not as default how far I press the pedal. It is a great upgrade for making my braking more consistent. I have placed the pedal as far left as doable so I have gas and brake pedals as centered as possible to my feet. The pedal surfaces are updated with Derek Spear design Tilton style pads for better angles and larger surface. The PC have of course received upgrades over the years. Case wise I started with a Fractal Design R3 and then on to a Fractal Design R4 and after that I switched brand to Fantex and the case Ethno Pro. And currently I am using a Fantech Ethno Evolve Glass Edition case. I have previously owned an Intel i5-3570K and an Intel i7-4790K processor and now I am on the AMD platform using a Ryzen 7 2700X processor. The core count have increased which have been necessary for my PC performance as I race and stream from one computer and not have a separate dedicated streaming PC. I use a NZTA XT Kraken X62 water cooling unit for my CPU which is overclocked to run all 8 cores and 16 threads at 4.1 GHz at 1.380 volts. The ROM memory speed have increased from DDR3 to DDR4 and the size have grown from 8GB to 32GB and the memory is ticking at 2800MHz. GPU wise I started with the GeForce GTX 780 and later on I got another one running them in a SLE configuration and then on to a single GTX 980 Ti to the current GTX 1080 Ti. In the video description below I got more information of my sim rig, hardware, peripherals and PC specs. And there you can likewise see more of what software and programs I am using. Lastly, I am very satisfied with my Obutto Revolution sim racing cockpit. 
I have used this sim rig extensively over six years and it suffers from some wear and tear in some areas, but it has served me well and will continuing to do so. There are other sim racing rigs on the market that compared to mine are way way more expensive and got more advanced functions as full motion. And there are hardware compared to mine that are more high end as direct drive wheels and hydraulic pedals and VR. I have found a balance in my choice of hardware and peripherals that suits me. And there are three things that have been important here for me and still are. And that are, number one, try to keep things as simple as possible. Don't install too much software and hardware that complicate things. Number two, being comfortable in the seat. I always run barefoot and preferably in my shorts because I like it that way. And number three, the importance of keeping the sim rig and the room clean. I can't focus on racing otherwise and I gladly have a window open for fresh air during racing. No sim rig, hardware and peripherals really makes us faster in races, but they definitely makes it more immersive and fun on the track, and that is for me one of the fundamentals for good racing results. Thanks again for watching and your interest.